And a very pleasant good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Ives Lamell Family Field on the campus of Brevard College. Very glad you're able to join us for this special edition of Brevard College football. The first ever Brevard College football game played under the lights on the campus of Brevard College. So you're witnessing history this evening. This game was originally scheduled for Saturday and rescheduled for this evening due to potential effects from Hurricane Ian. Our thoughts and prayers are with those down, especially in Florida, who saw the brunt of the hurricane. But here in the mountains of Western North Carolina, we are gearing up for a matchup between the Brevard College Tornadoes and the Greensboro College Pride. USA South Conference opener for these two teams. And the Tornado is looking to win for a fifth straight time over Greensboro. They've dominated the series in the four all-time meetings, 160 to 24. Tornadoes with the scoring advantage. And Tornadoes off to an 0-3 start, very difficult non-conference schedule, looking to avoid its first 0-4 start since the 2015 campaign. That was all the way back when NCAA Division II was the situation here at Brevard College. And should be a good one today between the Tornadoes and the Pride. So stick with us. We'll bring you the starting lineups in just a few moments. And all the action coming up in just a little bit. We're about 27 minutes and change away from kickoff. Tornadoes and Pride coming up shortly. Welcome back to Eyes Lamel Family Field on the campus of Brevard College. Lights are on. Friday night lights here at Brevard College. Tornadoes and Pride gearing up for this USA South Conference opener. Let's meet the starting lineups for each of the teams. First, let's take a look at the Tornadoes offense. Getting the start at quarterback, Miles Hayes, the graduate student. We'll get the start at the quarterback position for the Tornadoes. Expect to see some of Cedric Brooks as well, the, the backup to Hayes. Mitchell Yoder, the starting running back. Jonathan Woods gets the start at wide receiver along with Dalton Cole. Jaden O'Leary, starting tight end. He'll be backed up by Jordy Wilkinson. Halfback is Chancellor Lee Parker, the junior. 
He's made an impact, a newcomer to the Tornadoes. And then the starting offensive line, a few changes here since we saw you last for the home opener. Brody Lindsey, the starting right tackle. Starting right guard is LaRodrick Rucker. Center will be Todd Norman. Left guard, Justin Parker. And left tackle, Brandon Unangst. So that's the Tornadoes starting offense. And now we'll take a look at the starting defense for the Tornadoes this evening. Defensive line, Trey Williams will get the start. The junior in the middle, the nose tackle, Ernest Smith, the second. Wyatt Langford, the starter on the other defensive end position. Linebackers, Jerome Bass and R.J. Everett on the outside. Inside linebackers, Toby Naylor and Reese Rubio. And then the defensive backs, a little different here in terms of the starting lineup because Cameron Moore is out with an injury. So we'll see James Woods at one cornerback position, Jock Pledger at the other, Dylan James and Montrell Stinson at the safety position. So there's your Tornadoes starting lineups. Let's take a look at Greensboro starters as well. And first we'll take a look at their offense, the, the Pride. And by the way, the Pride is going to throw the ball a lot. Like, this is the scouting report we receive. This is a high-octane passing offense, not afraid to take the deep shot. So we'll watch that throughout this contest. Starting quarterback is David Lawry. Rodney Scott, the junior, is the starting running back. Then they go three wide as far as their listed starting lineup. Cale Matthews, Coy Davis, K.J. Greer, Tight ends, Ryan Buchanan, and then the offensive line, Tyler Foster, Jalen Harrington, Ernest Bencomo, Adam Stubbs, and Nick Furman. Now let's take a look at the Pride defense. And Simeon Marsh Sheridan gets the start at, at one defensive end, Darius Benton at the other. Brendan Perdue and Manny Ellis, the defensive tackles. Linebackers, Tyler Austin and Max Steele. Jaden James at one cornerback, Tyler Clybum at the other, and then three safeties. So they, at least in terms of their listed starting lineup, it is a nickelback situation. Keondrick Baines, Dewan Robinson, and Jujuan Given. So there's your starters for Greensboro. We took a look at the starting offensive defense at the Tornadoes. By the way, want to make sure we prep you on the specialist as well, Stamati Damalos, an incredible weapon for the Tornadoes, one of the best kickers throughout NCAA Division Three. Hugo Taylor handles the kickoffs for the most part, so we'll keep an eye on him as well, the sophomore. Nicholas Akis, the punter for the Tornadoes. Return men include Cooper Hogan and Jock Pledger, Zachary Orr as well. Long snappers, Jamie Tinsley in the holders, Nick Akis, Greensboro's kicker is Morano Collins, and Adam Luya is the punter. So there's your personnel for the two sides as we head towards kickoff here, about 21 minutes, 15 seconds. A glorious yellow sky here at the moment as the remnants of Hurricane Ian continue to circle around the mountains here in western North Carolina. We've still seen very little precipitation. Now, as you go outside, you feel kind of the weather shifting a bit as the wind continues to pick up, as the temperature continues to drop, but very little precipitation as of now, but we'll keep a close eye on those weather conditions. So stick with us, Greensboro and Brevard. We're about 20 minutes away from the start of this one, USA South Conference opener for both teams. Luis Alvarez, Guadalupe, Arizona. Dalton Cole, Hendersonville, North Carolina. Jaden O'Leary, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Jory Wilkinson, Washington, Wilkes, Georgia. Jonathan Woods, Huntsville, Alabama. Cooper Hogan, New London, North Carolina. Andrew Tarleton, Denver, North Carolina. Zach Orr, Charleston, South Carolina. Marcus Lane, Southern South Carolina. Deshaun Curtis, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Jeremy Rudolph, Orlando, Florida. Jackson Petrie, Orlando, Florida. Zion Cower, Grovetown, Georgia. Devin Tanner, Meridian, Connecticut. Reginald Taylor II, Charlotte, North Carolina. Adam Douglas, Greensboro, North Carolina. Jordan Rao, Charlotte, North Carolina. Go Tornadoes. Antonio Damos, Darwin Springs, Florida. Cedric Brooks, Portland, Oregon. Jacob Reed, Wilmington, North Carolina. 
Eli Carr, Asheville, North Carolina, Miles Hayes, Northport, Florida, Thomas Kramer, Clearwater, Florida, DJ Taylor, Lawrenceville, Georgia, Go Nato, Mitchell Yoder, Columbus, North Carolina, Matthew Vu, Colin Springs, North Carolina, Dustin Stevens, Colby, North Carolina, Chance Lee Parker, Atlanta, Georgia, Alan Wilfong, New North Carolina, Freddie Aiken III, Hardyville, South Carolina, Devontae Murray, Murphy, North Carolina, Josh Blackstock, Dublin, Georgia, Todd Norman, Mooresville, North Carolina, Andrew Bullard, Charleston, South Carolina, Dakota Grimsley, Trinity, North Carolina, Hayden Schnell, Oakwood, Georgia, Justin Parker, Inca, North Carolina, Brandon Unix, Forest City, North Carolina, Hank Tart, Camden, South Carolina, Brody Lindsay, Hendersonville, North Carolina, Roger Rucker, Hartwell, Georgia, Jerry Smith, Asheville, North Carolina, Daryl Smith, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Red Marsh, Huntsville, Alabama. Go Natives. Jamie Tinsley, High Point, North Carolina. Sims Watley, Anderson, South Carolina. Rylan Chaney, Owensboro, Kentucky. Dominic O'Brien, Huntersville, North Carolina. Wyatt Lakeford, Shelby, North Carolina. Luke Dodson, Bavard, North Carolina. Go Tornadoes. Steve Victoriano, Rockford, North Carolina. Josh Whetstone, Kernersville, North Carolina. Andrew Bishop, Hicker, North Carolina. Logan Jones, Grover, North Carolina. Trey Williams, Winnett County, Georgia. Moses Perkins, Jacksonville, Florida. Obadiah Grimes, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Joshua Garner, Newburgh, North Carolina. Jeff Manning, Emmerland, Florida. Reese Rubio. Beaumont, Texas, Noah Allen, Trinity, North Carolina, Bailey Ramey, Yakinville, North Carolina, Toby Naylor, Southampton, England, NATO Nation, let's ride. Eli Evart, Thomasville, North Carolina, Brooks Ashford, Orangeburg, South Carolina, James Woods, Lincoln, North Carolina, Ben Ellis, Mooresville, North Carolina, Nicholas Clark, Ashboro, North Carolina, Bryce Easter, Grand North Carolina, Jake Haig, Orlando, Florida, RJ Everett, Johns Creek, Georgia, Quincy Okoka, Jr., Macon, Georgia. Ashton Crooks, Mooresville, North Carolina. Kobe Yancey, Monroe, Georgia. Jamil George, Dallas, Georgia. Quintero Bowman, Rothboro, North Carolina. Go Nato. Kentra Holloway, Roxborough, North Carolina. Tyler Harrison, Franklin, North Carolina. Cameron Moore, Miami, Florida. Jock Pledger, Monroe, Georgia. Go Tornadoes. Taylor Willis, Northport, Florida. Brady Penn, Loganville, Georgia. Let's go Natoes. AJ Richardson, Fayetteville, Georgia. Dylan James, AKA Champ. Gainesville, Florida. Go Natoes. Montrose Stinson, Maine, North Carolina. Zion Barzlo, Houston, Georgia. Jerome Bass, Raceway, North Carolina. Louis Lamont Jr., Jacksonville, Florida. Emmanuel White, Deltona, Florida. Willie Manuel, Mobile, Alabama. Terry Ann Burgess, Southern South Carolina. Ernest Smith, Baldwin, South Carolina. Let's go Tornadoes.
So Tornado's Spirit in motion here at Isla Mel Family Field as the Brevard College cheerleaders tossing out NATO Nation t-shirts to the students who arrived early here in the student section. And you can see the excitement here with the Brevard College student section. Really appreciate their support of the NATOs. The drum line is in effect. The cheerleaders here ready to roll as well. Stick with us. We'll bring you the action. Greensboro and Brevard coming up shortly. So great look there. Some a beautiful moment here at Isla Mel Family Field as the sun sets beyond the Blue Ridge Mountains here, and it's a gorgeous evening. Friday night lights at Isla Mel Family Field. So stick with us. Pride and tornadoes meeting on the gridiron here at Isla Mel Family Field. Less than 10 minutes until kickoff scheduled for Eyes Lamel Family Field, Tornadoes and the Pride. This game originally scheduled for Saturday, a 2 p.m. kickoff. Early in the week, it was decided to move it to Friday. Then 
all the operations had to get into place. And bottom line, Friday Night Lights, history in the making. First ever Brevard College football game played under the lights on the campus of Brevard College. So it should be a good one. Tornadoes and Pride in the USA South Conference opener for the Nados. All the goals for t the Tornadoes ahead of them still. And it starts tonight with the start of USA South Conference play. So stick with us. Under nine minutes left on the countdown clock. And we'll bring you all the action from Ives Lamell Family Field on the campus of Brevard College. So the Tornadoes have arrived here at Islamel Family Field, their home turf. And a lot of excitement here under the lights. Let us pray. God, we stand in this space grateful for another day, for your protection in everything that allows us to be in this space. We pray your blessings upon everyone involved in this moment, from student athletes to coaches to trainers to refs, everyone involved and those who have made their way to this space. We pray your blessings upon us and those who have been in harm's way, and we thank you for the highest level of sportsmanship and athleticism and cheering that we can have. We give thanks now. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please remain standing and remove your hats for the singing of the national anthem performed today by Bavard College student, Mr. Patrick Yeh. Oh, say can 
can you see by the dawn's early light or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangle banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Patrick Yang, Brevard College student, excellent job. That rendition of the national anthem. Also want to thank Sherrod Creesman, campus minister, for getting us started with tonight's invocation. And we are nearing the start of this one as the captains are lined up and are heading out to toss the coin, see who's going to start with the ball first. Justin Parker, Brandon Unangst, Toby Naylor, and Jaden O'Leary, the captains for the Tornadoes. Also, Jerome Bass. Check that Bass along with Naylor representing the defensive side, Parker in Unix, the offensive side. So we'll keep an eye on the coin toss here. So coin toss coming here and about to get started a lot of excitement you can feel it in the air here and talking to coach Kyat before the game when they have practices here at Isla Mel family field under the lights he doesn't even have to try to motivate the players they come that jacked up whenever the lights are on they have been asking for a home game under the lights since tornadoes football moved on campus because of USA South Conference scheduling and also road team travel it just hasn't been a possibility until tonight and this was just a circumstance with hurricane ian greensboro won the toss defers to the second half and the tornadoes will receive so we'll keep an eye on The Tornadoes kick return team. Looks like DJ Taylor deep. Along with Cooper Hogan. Marino Collins, the place kicker for Greensboro. Tornadoes in their home white uniforms, the whiteout game here, and the silver helmets, the blue numerals, Greensboro, the road team in the green uniforms. Tornado student section is up and rocking, chanting. The drum line is in play. The cheerleaders rocking and rolling. T-shirts have been tossed. We are ready to get rolling here under the lights at Isla Mel Family Field. Incredibly, we've seen very little, maybe just a rain drop or two. 
We'll keep an eye on the weather, though, as Hurricane Ian continues to, to wreak havoc throughout the southeast. But meanwhile, we are underway here at Islamel Family Field, taken there by Cooper Hogan. Hogan's able to split a couple defenders and a nice return there out to the 37-yard line, Cooper Hogan. So great starting field position for the Tornadoes after the kickoff return by Hogan. And so the Tornadoes... We'll start. We'll call it the 36-yard line. And the Tornadoes will get started here. Miles Hayes, the quarterback. And Mitchell Yoder, the single back behind him. Hayes takes a snap under center, rush to Yoder, and he gains about two yards. Brendan Perdue, the defensive tackle, for the Pride, able to wrap up Yoder there. So first running play of the day for the Tornadoes. First play from scrimmage. It's a run by Yoder for three yards. Second and seven from the 39. Shotgun. And a bit of an option play here to the near side. And Dustin Stevens gets the carry. And he gets pushed out of bounds there, just short of the markers. We'll call it third and two. So two running plays so far for the Tornadoes. Meanwhile, we have an injured NATO. Looks like it. one of the offensive linemen, Justin Parker, looks like is the, the injured player. So we'll take a quick timeout. Just underway here at Islamel Family Field, 14-14 to play in the first quarter. Scoreless, Tornadoes and Pride. I've taken jumps in my academic career, and I've taken jumps in uh, just socializing and getting out and getting to do things I've never done before. The thing that brought me to Brevard is the experiential learning. I've always been a hands-on guy. I love it here at Brevard. Over Christmas break, I was itching to come back because I love the area so much. Experiential learning here is beyond all of my expectations. Brevard College, a top choice for students around the world. So Justin Parker walking off the field with a nice ovation for him. LaRodrick Rucker replaces Parker at that left guard position. LaRoderick Rucker, the heralded freshman for the Tornadoes, had a great camp and has made an impact early on along that offensive line as Parker leaves the field for injury. Meanwhile, third and two for the Tornadoes. Hayes in the shotgun. Hayes keeps it himself and able to power his way for the first down, that's some powerful running by, by the quarterback of the Tornadoes, Miles Hayes, ladies and gentlemen, the graduate student from Northport, Florida, transfer from Livingstone. Freddie Aiken has checked in. Also, we see Dalton Cole wide out. Also, Jonathan Woods and... First first down of the game for either team on this opening drive for the Tornadoes. Another run, so four plays, four rushes for the Nados thus far. And Aiken's able to get about two yards there, so we'll call it second and eight. Actually, we'll call it th a three-yard gain, it looks like. So on the 49, second and... Six or seven. So four plays from scrimmage so far by the Nados. All running plays. Hayes. A keeper again and able to split a couple defenders. Then he's brought down. You can tell the running game of Hayes. And down at the 46. Ellis with the tackle for the Pride. Emmanuel Ellis, the sophomore from Greensboro, 
Williams High School. So that brings up another third down. Tornadoes were able to convert their first third down opportunity. Third, and we'll call it four. Hayes, first pass play of the game for the Tornadoes. He's able to find Dalton Cole. Dalton Cole is going to have a first down and then some. And the Tornadoes continue to move the sticks. Great play call there. Great look to find the open Dalton Cole. And then Dalton Cole, great work in space. And Cole's able to get the gainer there. Another first down for the Tornadoes. And it'll be first and 10 from the 30. Hayes, little shuffle pass there to O'Leary. And O'Leary all the way down to the seven yard line. Another nifty play call, the shuffle pass to O'Leary. So Hayes has been just sensational on this drive, whether it's rushing or now using the passing game, the 16-yard gain to Dalton Cole, and then a 23-yard gain there on the shuffle past O'Leary. Mitchell Yoder in the backfield. Hayes under center. Rush to Yoder, and he stopped right at the line. In fact, that might be a, a loss of one. Ellis once again with the tackle. Also Burgess getting in there for the pride. So it'll be second and goal now from the eight yard line. Stevens in the backfield for the Tornadoes. We saw him with a carry early on. Cole and Wood split out left and right, respectively. Rush right up the middle, and Greensboro not fooled once again. And then looks like another tackle for loss. Or maybe no gain. So bottom line is it's going to be third and goal from the eight-yard line. This is the 10th play of the drive coming up here for the Tornadoes. A very methodical drive. Nice mix of run and pass. Now over five minutes have elapsed in this drive. But meanwhile, another third down faces the Tornadoes. Toughest one yet, third and eight. Third and goal from the eight. Hayes keeps it himself in the pride. We're not fooled. And they're able to take down Hayes. Gang tackled there. A tackle for loss. Looks like the ball will be spotted at the 10, and that'll bring up a field goal opportunity for Stamani Damalos. Meanwhile, Max Steele was leading the way for the pride defensively. So it looks like a 27-yard attempt here for Stamani Damalos from 27 yards out. And the kick is up, and no good. Wide left, so a rare missed field goal for one of the best field goal kickers in the nation, Stamani Domelos. And the Tornadoes, despite driving down the field, an 11-play drive that lasted six minutes, and the Tornadoes come up empty after the missed field goal. So Greensboro will have the ball. Tough field position for the Pride. First and 10 from the 10. So first offensive possession of the game for the Pride. First and 10 from the 10. And rush there, Cortez Eccles. Trying to confirm who the back was there. And 
And another rush here. And that's going to be a first down for the Pride. So scouting report said the Pride were going to throw the ball over all over the place. Instead, they start with two straight pass or check that run plays here. So David Lawry, the quarterback, the senior from Indian Land. Coy Davis out wide. And incomplete. Nice pressure there. Toby Naylor with the quarterback hurry. KJ Dagout, who has been thrust into a more substantial role for the Tornadoes defensively. The sophomore from Mount Holly, North Carolina, getting it done. East Gaston High School. Zach Atkinson on the field for the Pride and second and 10. And a pass there and incomplete. Well done there. The Tornadoes, Montrell Stinson with the pass breakup. And that'll bring up third and 10. So two running plays by the Pride with a good amount of effectiveness. Nine-yard rush, 11-yard rush. So two rushes for 11 yards. But then two pass plays, both incomplete. One due to the quarterback hurry by Naylor, and then Stinson there with the back big breakup. Third and 10 from the 31. And incomplete. So Tornadoes pass defense. This was certainly one of the... Keys to victory was limiting the pride passing game. And so far, so good for the NATOs. Meanwhile, punt here. Murano Collins, Collins, who also handled the kickoff, will handle the punt here for Greensboro. And the first flag of the day, so we'll see what this is all about. Look like Greensboro might have moved. You can see the NATO faithful, the student section, the cowbells ringing. As crowd might have had something to do with that, trying to, you know, amp the volume here, make things uncomfortable for this punting unit for the Pride. Deep for the Tornadoes, Jock Pledger, the punt returner. High snap and barely able to get it off there. And Collins is going to let it roll. And it'll be downed at the 38-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Tornadoes after an impressive opening drive. They'll see if they can either get in the end zone or get some points on the board this time around. A nice job by the Tornadoes defensively. And Tornadoes offense regains possession. Miles Hayes back in action here. Zachary Orr on the field as well, along with Jonathan Woods. Pass here, and a big gainer here. Woods able to cross midfield. Great-looking play call once again. And Jonathan Woods with the big gain there. So the Tornadoes have had a couple chunk plays thus far. And another first down for the Tornadoes. Tornadoes now with a 4-1 to one advantage in the first down department after that 22-yarder to Jonathan Woods. Pass here in the flat. O'Leary with a catch and a gainer there. Another first down, the fifth first down of the game for the Tornadoes. So the passing game, very effective so far as Hayes able to find O'Leary. Hayes now four for four on the evening. 
And for O'Leary, that was his second catch. This is coming back, however, a holding call. So wipe out that play. So the flag came a little late and way in the backfield, but we'll march them back. And that's a costly penalty. That was another key that we talked to Coach Kyatt about pregame. The idea that the Tornadoes cannot be their own worst enemy, whether it be penalties, drop passes. Meanwhile, so the Tornadoes will have to regroup here. We'll call it first and 17. Rush here. And we'll see... Chancellor Lee Parker is wearing number 44 this evening. And brought a lot of energy there. Meanwhile, we've got a penalty. And it looks like it's going to be a personal foul of some type on Greensboro. So we'll march it back the other way. So that's going to be an automatic first down for the Tornadoes after the personal foul. It's going to be first and 10 from the 24. Costly penalty there for the Pride, and the Tornado's able to get back on track here. Yoder in the backfield. Senior from Columbus, North Carolina. Hayes dropping back. Now deep shot and able to find an open receiver, Zachary Orr, for the touchdown. And the tornado celebration ensues. 6 0 tornadoes. A beautiful pass and catch there. As Hayes was able to find Zachary Orr. Extra point here for Stamati Damalos. Zachary Orr, the junior from Charleston, South Carolina. West Ashley High School with the touchdown. Kick is up and good. 7-0 Tornadoes on top. So the Tornado is able to make quick work on that opportunity. A 23-yard touchdown pass. Hayes to Orr. Set up there by Chancellor Lee Parker at a nine-yard rush, and then that costly penalty, personal foul on Greensboro. And 7-0, Tornadoes, a 6-1 advantage in first downs. And Miles Hayes, folks, four for four, 84 yards and a touchdown. Four for four, using four different receivers, 84 yards, and now a touchdown to put the Tornadoes on top. Hugo Taylor will kick off for the Tornadoes. By the way, Hugo Taylor, the place kicker, has a cast on his arm. Broken bone in the lower part of his arm, so playing with a cast. Meanwhile, kick here, fielded at the 10, and then brought down there for a very short return. Eli Everhart with the tackle. Everhart, senior from Thomasville, North Carolina, East Davidson High School. Transfer from Averett, who the Tornadoes saw in their last matchup. But Tornadoes with an early 7-0 lead. And now we'll get things started. On the defensive side, they were able to contain Greensboro that last possession. And now getting going once again. The Pride seeing if they can get things started on the ground as they did on their first. Rodney Scott Jr. with the rush there. 
Reese Rubio along with Tyler Harrison on that tackle. Meanwhile, Lowry, the quarterback, he's 0 for 3 thus far and incomplete there, so make it 0 for 4 for Lowry. So the Tornado's pass defense has gotten it done thus far. That'll bring up another third down. That pass intended to K.J. Greer. Fifty nine degrees at kickoff, temperature continuing to drop. Still haven't seen the rain we were expecting. As the remnants of Hurricane Ian mostly ended up to the east of us. Meanwhile, five nineteen to play here, quarter number one. Tornadoes up seven zero, a third down opportunity for the Pride. Pride wide receiver in motion. Lowry able to find him. And Cale Matthews. So Matthews came in motion, was able to find an opening. And Matthews eventually brought down by Stinson. The senior from Four Oaks, North Carolina. So the second first down of the game for the Pride. First and 10 from the 45. Four-man rush for the Tornadoes. They use the ground again, the Pride. And that'll be a gain of seven as Toby Naylor brings down the ball carrier. That was Chapman, number 29. And a deep shot here, a first deep shot of the game, and in and out, dropped there. That may have been six. Zach Atkinson. Zach Atkinson, number three for the Pride, the redshirt senior from Durham, North Carolina. He was... You know, seeing pay dirt, seeing paradise, seeing the end zone, but ends up dropping that football. First deep shot of the game, another thing we talked to Coach Kyatt about in the scouting report. This team takes as many deep shots as anyone in the USA South. Screen pass here, and that's going to be a first down, and then some. He's got blockers ahead of him. Coy Davis. Some serious yards after catch there. He had an army of blockers ahead of him. And Davis, the sophomore from Cornelius, North Carolina, with a big gain there. So suddenly Greensboro with a little bit of pep in their step. 20-yarder to Matthews earlier. That was a 23-yarder to Davis. 3.46 to play here, quarter number one. Tornado's up 7-0, rush by Scott. Toby Naylor with the tackle. Toby Naylor, the decorated senior for the Tornadoes out of Southampton, England. Three fifteen to play here, quarter number one. Second and ten after that rush for no gain, and the stop by Naylor. And that's going to be a sack by the Tornadoes. Big time sack there. Coger Jr. Requencio Coger Jr., the graduate student from Macon, Georgia. Transfer from Iowa Wesleyan. Two twenty-five to play here. 
Now third and 21 after the 11-yard loss on the quarterback sack. Screen play here and gang tackled by the Tornadoes. As K.J. Dagout was there once again, also Trey Williams. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Great job by the Tornadoes there, and that'll create a punt situation. It'll be Collins once again. Tornadoes put some pressure on Collins last time. And Collins able to get this one off. And fair catch there. And the Tornadoes will regroup and take over possession on the offensive end. Your score with 125 left to play. Quarter number one. Tornado seven, pride zero. So Tornadoes, their third offensive possession. They've driven down the field on their two possessions thus far. Tough field position this time around, starting at their own 15. Hayes with personnel including Yoder, Hogan, and Lane. And able to break some tackles there, Mitchell Yoder. Nice gainer there. Yoder, the senior from... Columbus, North Carolina, Polk County High School. Such a big part of this tornado attack. Ellis was there. We've called his name a bunch already. Meanwhile, approaching the one-minute mark here in the first quarter. Under a minute to play now. First and ten for the Nados. Another running play. That was Dustin Stevens this time around, so another rush for Stevens. May have gotten pushed out of bounds there, so clock stops, 41 seconds. And now clock running once again, so it might have just been the officials spotting the ball or whatnot. So meanwhile... Clock running down here towards the end of the first quarter. Hayes able to find a wide open wide receiver. Marcus Lane really nicely done there. Hayes a bullet to Lane. Marcus Lane, the sophomore from Sumter, South Carolina with the catch. Sumter High School. Marcus Lane. Able to create the opening, and boy, did Hayes find him. So that'll do it for the end of the first quarter with your score, Brevard 7, Greensboro 0. Tornadoes on a Hayes to or 23-yard touchdown pass. Giving the Tornadoes the touchdown advantage. We'll head to the second quarter under the lights here at Islamel Family Field. probably one of the prettiest places on the earth. And to come to somewhere where it's such a tight-knit community, where everybody has your back, I mean, you're not gonna find that anywhere else at bigger schools. I like to go hang out in the coffee shop, sit outside at the picnic tables, maybe do a little bit of homework there, and just socialize, because there's always somebody that I know there. Brevard does make it easy to come here. The admission process is very simple. Brevard College, a top choice for students around the world.
Back underway here, first play of the second quarter. Seems like the officials really moving this game along, maybe keeping an eye on the remnants of Hurricane Ian. Short breaks, even, even at the end of the quarter. Meanwhile, 14.30 to play here after that six-yard gainer. That was a keeper from Hayes. He's done a nice job running the ball. And he's five for five passing the ball. Make it six for six, Hayes. And the pass there once again to Lane. So back-to-back -back Hayes Lane connections. And Hayes now has started this game six for six. And he's now over the 100-yard mark as well. And we have an injury on the field, so a timeout here at Eislemel Family Field. 14-11 to play, Tornado 7, Pride 0. I've taken jumps in my academic career, and I've taken jumps in uh, just socializing and getting out and getting to do things I've never done before. The thing that brought me to Brevard is the experiential learning. I've always been a hands-on guy. I love it here at Brevard. Over Christmas break, I was itching to come back because I love the area so much. Experiential learning here is beyond all of my expectations. Brevard College, a top choice for students around the world. So first and 10 for the Tornadoes after the injury timeout. Miles Hayes, six for six, 108 yards and a touchdown already. Jaden O'Leary amongst the personnel on the field for the Tornadoes. Mitchell Yoder as well. Marcus Lane and now a whistle. And looks like a timeout by the Tornadoes. So we'll take it with them. 13.43 to play here. Tornado seven, pride zero. Probably one of the prettiest places on the earth. And to come to somewhere where it's such a tight knit community, where everybody has your back, I mean, you're not gonna find that anywhere else at bigger schools. I like to go hang out in the coffee shop, sit outside at the picnic tables, maybe do a little bit of homework there, and just socialize because there's always somebody that I know there. Brevard does make it easy to come here. The admission process is very simple. Brevard College, a top choice for students around the world. Back to action here, 13.43 to play, quarter number two. A lot of excitement going on. NFL, college football, Major League Baseball coming down the, the stretch here, pennant races. Meanwhile, first and ten here at Eisenmel Family Field. O'Leary once again. He has been a key factor in this one, a big gain there. Jaden O'Leary. And a big gain there once again by the Tornadoes. First down, O'Leary, the senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And Hayes now, check out this, seven for seven, 135 yards. First and 10 from the Greensboro, 15. Rush to the left, Yoder able to skip through some traffic. We've seen a heavy dose of Yoder. That's his fourth carry of the game. Uh, Miles Hayes, seven for seven, 135 yards, also 11 yards on the ground. A touchdown to his credit. Meanwhile, that was a seven-yard rush by Yoder, so an effective running play there. Tornadoes with a 10-3 advantage in first downs. And are dominating in total yards as well, 178 to 52. Devontae Murray now on the field for the Tornadoes in the backfield. Hayes under center. And play action to Murray, and then 
So rolling out to the right and then able to make the catch there, Cooper Hogan. Hogan, nice job in the flat there. Really nicely done, the play action, and then finding Hogan. And that's another first down for the Tornadoes, their 11th of the contest. And the Tornadoes now, this will be the ninth play of the drive, so the, another effective drive here. Ball control, chunk plays, effective running game, a perfect quarterback so far, 7-for-7. Seven seven. Tornadoes clicking on all cylinders. 11.53 to play and counting, first and goal. Chancellor Lee Parker on the field. Keeper here from Hayes in a touchdown. Miles Hayes. Hayes with the touchdown from three yards out. So Hayes now with a touchdown rushing and a touchdown passing. And the Tornadoes finding the end zone for the second time this evening. Stamati Domelos will line up for the extra point. Holder for the Tornadoes, Nick Akis. Long snapper, Jamie Tinsley. And the kick is up from Damalos. And good. So with 11.42 to play here, quarter number two. Tornadoes now with a 14-0 lead. What a drive that was, by the way. Started all the way back on the Tornadoes' 15-yard line. Nine plays, 85 yards. Took four minutes and 43 seconds, and ultimately Miles Hayes with a three-yard run. Big play to Jaden O'Leary for 27 yards on that drive. In the Tornadoes with a 14-0 advantage, Hugo Taylor will line things up to kick off once again for the Tornadoes. And the kickoff return coverage unit for the Tornadoes just swarming, flying down that field. The electricity. Devin Hawkins with the return. Tackled there by James Woods. Sophomore from Lincolnton, North Carolina, Lincolnton High School. There is a flag on the play, so we'll see what this is all about. Well, we talked to Coach Kyatt before the game, and Coach Kyatt said on an average day of practice, he has to up his volume, get his team motivated, get him, get him you know, into the football mode, coming from the classroom and, and get them going. But when they practice under the lights... It just happens automatically. The Tornadoes have an electric vibe to them under the lights. And the question was whether that natural electricity from within would be part of the equation tonight. And so far, so good. The Tornadoes with a 14-0 lead. Rush there by Burgess. And meanwhile, Greensboro's had a hard time offensively. The Tornado defense has been outstanding. Three first downs, that's it for the Pride so far. Just 52 yards for the Pride. Pass there. And looks like Matthews with the catch. Brought down there by number 23, K.J. Dagout. We've called Dagout's name a bunch. He's someone who has been elevated a bit. 
Great work on the practice field to earn this opportunity. K.J. Dagout, 10.50 to play here, quarter number two. Quarterback scramble and taken down there. Very short gain. We'll call it one. So second and nine. Lowry, the quarterback for Greensboro. Four of nine, 52 yards. He's also been sacked. Rush there, and the tornado's all over it. Burgess was on the carry again, and a big-time stop there by the Nados. Big-time stop there by Grimes. Obadiah Grimes, the freshman from Lawrenceville, Georgia, Walnut Grove High School. Big time individual effort there from Grimes. 10 12 to play here. And there's the tornado pressure up front once again and brought down for the second quarterback sack. Trey Williams able to nullify that third down single handedly. The junior from Gwinnett County, Georgia. You could see the celebration from Williams, one of the more energetic, colorful members of the Tornadoes team. Loves the social media as well, Williams. Meanwhile, 10 minutes to play here. Quarter number two, there is an injured player on the field, a member of the Pride. Well, what a night here at Brevard College thus far. This game originally scheduled for Saturday. Rescheduled for this evening, there were a ton of logistics to figure out to make all this happen. And Greensboro able to make it here safely today, Friday evening. So far, the weather has continued to hold off. There is some rain at the moment, but nothing serious. We're seeing some umbrellas start to pop up in the grandstands here. But it all resulted... In the first ever home football night game at Brevard College, as we're really seeing the first remnants of Hurricane Ian start to hit the mountains here. Most of it is to the east of western North Carolina. And meanwhile, punt here, and this is going to be great field position as Jock Pledger able to take the punt return near the 30-yard line, so a nice return there by Pledger, one of the most decorated tornadoes. The junior from Monroe, Georgia, and that's going to be just outstanding field position for the tornadoes. So first and 10 from the 31 Currently 55 degrees. They're calling it a drizzle. Keeping on the wind also as the remnants of Hurricane Ian in the vicinity suddenly. 9.35 to play here and counting quarter number two. Currently 12 mile per hour wind. Gusting at times, 77% humidity. 9.20 to play here, quarter number two. Tornadoes trying to take advantage of this good field position. Two-yard gain on that last play. Freddie Aiken in the backfield. And Aiken able to split a couple defenders. Big time rush there. Freddie Aiken, Freddie Aiken the third to be exact, senior from Hardyville, South Carolina, John Paul the second high school, and another first down for the Tornadoes. That's the 12th first down of the evening 
for the home team. Chancellor Lee Parker back in the backfield. Dalton Cole set out right. Bobbled snap there on the shotgun snap. Hayes did everything he could to gather it up, and Ellis ends up smothering Hayes. So a bit of a scare there. And this was another point of emphasis that Coach Kyatt was talking to us about. You know, you get in a decent position, and then you have a self-inflicted wound, pushes you back a few yards. So now back at the 13-yard line, we'll call it, so second and goal from Long now. 7.52 to play, quarter number two. Hayes back to pass. He's able to shake one pass rusher, able to split two defenders. He is not afraid to take on defenders. Miles Hayes, a powerful force at that quarterback position. Brought down there by Jaden Coleman. Gain of seven on the play. So it's going to be third and goal from the five. Seven, 15, and counting. Quarter number two. Empty backfield. Hayes in the shotgun. Five wide. Hayes. Gets off that throw. Then a, a leaping catch in a touchdown. Jaden O'Leary going up high. What a play. Hayes able to shake off a pass rusher, and then with a pride defender all over him, able to get that throw off, he throws up a jump ball, and O'Leary goes up high for the touchdown. And the Tornado is able to stretch their lead even further. Stamati Domalos now for the extra point. What a touchdown there. Hayes to O'Leary for five yards. Kick is up. Kick is good. And 21-0. Tornadoes on top. Another scoring drive. Now, this one was aided quite a bit by the advantageous Starting field position, the good punt return by Jock Pledger set this whole thing up. Freddie Aiken the third with a 20-yard rush. Really got things going. And then the Tornadoes able to recover after that dropped snap. And able to get it done. Hayes with that rush up the middle for eight yards. And then what a play throwing it up high, and then O'Leary going up high, showing some of that vertical to pull down the touchdown. And just like that, Tornado's up 21-0. Let's take a look at Hayes' numbers because they are just fantastic thus far. The graduate student, Miles Hayes, getting the Start at quarterback this evening. He's 10 for 10 for 148 yards and two touchdowns. And some difficulty there on the kickoff return side for Greensboro. And it's going to be difficult field position for the Pride. But can't emphasize enough, Miles Hayes, 10 for 10. 148 yards, two touchdowns. He also has a touchdown on the ground, 16 yards rushing. O'Leary, meanwhile, four catches, 57 yards, and a touchdown. The other touchdown went to Zachary Orr. Running back for the pride is Rodney Scott. Rush here. And a short gain as the Tornado defense was there yet again. Jerome Bass leading the way. Tornado's defense have made things very tough on the pride, pitching a shutout at the moment. 
Second and 11 after the tackle for loss by Bass. And a short pass there. Coy Davis with the catch. And Jock Pledger able to step up and wrestle down Davis. That'll bring up another third down opportunity here for the Pride. They're two for five thus far in these situations. So it's third and five from the 25. Deep shot from Greensboro. Their second of the contest, and this one is going to be complete. So we knew this was going to be expected. These deep shots by the Pride in that time able to connect to K.J. Greer. Biggest play by far for Greensboro thus far. Greer, a freshman from Walkertown, North Carolina. And Pride with their biggest threat thus far now at the 35-yard line of Brevard. And picked off there. Big time interception. That puts an end to that. And Colby Yancey, the sophomore from Monroe, Georgia, with the interception. Career first for Yancey, the sophomore. Big time interception, first turnover of the contest. And that was after a 40-yard deep shot where Greensboro probably felt like they suddenly had some momentum. Well, Yancey put an end to that. 4.59 to play here, quarter number two. Rush here. Freddie Aiken the third. So Tornadoes using the ground attack. Simon Marsh Sheridan with the tackle. Second and seven for the Tornadoes. Chancellor Lee Parker with the carry there. And Lee Parker able to shake off a couple of defenders. Just a one-man wrecking ball there. Chancellor Lee Parker. Out of Auburn, Georgia, Mill Creek High School, Lee Parker's the transfer from Mars Hill. And broken up there, Max Steele was there. And it's going to be one of the better defensive possessions for the Pride thus far. So the Tornado's unable to capitalize on the turnover by Yancey. Check that, the takeaway by Yancey. Turnover by the Pride, but punting unit on the field for the Tornadoes. And Nick Akis will put toe to leather. And that takes a very fortuitous bounce if you're on the pride side of things. So it'll be decent field position for the Greensboro Pride. 21-0 your score, 325 to play, quarter number two. Well, if you're just joining us, it has been all tornadoes this evening. 21-0 your score thus far. Greensboro trying to make something happen on the offensive end here. 
decent field position for the Pride after a short punt. And looked like a muff snap there. It's not much happening there. And it's actually going to be a loss of maybe one or two yards. So it's going to be second and we'll call it 12. And big time stop there. Wyatt Langford, ladies and gentlemen. Senior from Shelby, North Carolina, Crest High School. Now Langford wears some serious face paint. I mean, if you ever have a chance to check out his look on game day, wow. Third and 11 from the 41. Pass rush, making things difficult on Lowry. Then beautiful effort there by the wide receiver, but ultimately broken up. Dylan James making the pass break up. Dylan James, the sophomore defensive back, out of Gainesville, Florida, Trenton High School, Alachua County, the 3-5-2. 217 to play here, quarter number two. And a punt here for the Pride. Pledger is going to pick it up off the bounce, tries to shake a couple of Pride defenders, ends up with about a two yard punt return. But Tornadoes will take back over. 2.07 to play. We'll see what the Tornadoes decide to do here. Tornadoes with two timeouts. Pride with three. So the Tornadoes will reset here in Miles Hayes. Hayes picks up a muff snap and then able to connect. What a play to who else? Jaden O'Leary. O'Leary's fifth catch. Smith with the tackle. What a play there by Hayes. Hayes started this game 10 for 10. Another big gain there. Just the second incompletion for Hayes. Now 11 for 13. 32 yarder to O'Leary. What a night O'Leary's having, by the way, from the reception, receiving side of things, rather. Five catches, 89 yards, and a touchdown. O'Leary, 180 yards, two touchdowns in the air, a touchdown on the ground. 142 to play here. Four wide for the Tornadoes. Woods and Dawn Cole split out wide. Hayes shakes off a defender, able to find an open receiver. And Mitchell Yoder able to break a couple tackles. And Steele eventually brings him down, but great yards after catch from Mitchell Yoder. The eighth different receiver that Hayes has used thus far. So using all sorts of tornado weapons. Meanwhile, 80 seconds left to play here. Quarter number two. And Greensboro's Manny Ellis able to get in the backfield there. So they were finally able to get to Hayes. That'll be the first sack of the evening for the Pride defense. Meanwhile, timeout on the field. So 
So timeout with 112 to play. Tornadoes 21, Pride 0. I've taken jumps in my academic career, and I've taken jumps in uh, just socializing and getting out and getting to do things I've never done before. The thing that brought me to Brevard is the experiential learning. I've always been a hands-on guy. I love it here at Brevard. Over Christmas break, I was itching to come back because I love the area so much. Experiential learning here is beyond all of my expectations. Brevard College, a top choice for students around the world. Back to action here at Eyes Lamel Family Field. 112 to play. Second and 12 for the Nados after the first sack of the evening by the Pride defense. Yoder in the backfield. Hayes to his right in the shotgun. Hayes drops back, scans his options, was looking for Jonathan Woods in and out of the hands of Woods. Well, we wish to recognize Party Sports Medicine and Southeastern Sports Medicine Orthopedics, the official health care provider for Brevard College Tornado Athletics. In addition to the quality care provided by the orthopedic doctors, Party also offers care in the areas of oncology, cardiovascular, primary care, and several subspecialties. Party Sports Medicine, proud partners with Brevard College Athletics. 107 here, quarter number two. Empty backfield, Hayes able to find an open receiver there. Dalton Cole under a minute of play here. Cole right around the sticks. Very close to that first down marker. And official timeout here maybe to measure or at least to respot the ball. Meanwhile, Tornado's offense heading towards the sideline as if there's a timeout on the field. Meanwhile, Greensboro's defense heads to their sideline. It's going to be tough to get those chains through all those members of the pride over there on that far sideline if in fact it is a measurement. And we will see a measurement. So pride defense told, hey, get back on your side of the line of scrimmage. We need to measure this thing. And it's going to be four... It's going to be fourth and inches for the tornado. So decision time for Coach Kyatt and company. Head coach Bill Kyatt. In his sixth season at the helm of the tornadoes. Tornadoes are going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and inches, I formation. And rush there right up the middle, and that's going to be a touchdown. Chancellor Lee Parker. Chancellor Lee Parker with the touchdown. And Tornado's able to get one more score in before the end of the half. That one coming on a fourth down rush by Chancellor Lee Parker, the Mars Hill transfer, the junior from Auburn, Georgia. And meanwhile, Damalos will come in for another extra point. He's three for three in this category thus far. First touchdown in a Tornado uniform for Lee Parker. Extra point is good. 28-0, Tornadoes on top. And the electricity under the lights. Completely in the Nato's favor thus far. Two 
Chancellor Lee Parker, you know, he usually wears 22, and this evening wearing 44. And we were told the change happened because a lot of his special teams activity necessitates the 44. And great point there by public address announcer Ray Gill. Hey, 44, 22 times 2, double it up, and something's working as, Par as Lee Parker with his first career touchdown as a tornado. And fair caught there after they bobbled the last kickoff return. So the pride, I would imagine, are just going to kneel this down and regroup because a tornado in the form of the Brevard College Tornadoes has made things very tough on the pride. Meanwhile, conditions starting to deteriorate a little bit here. Nothing too heavy, but certainly some rain. And that football a bit slick out there now. And rush right up the middle there. As looks like time will just about elapse. See if the Pride get one more snap off here. 15 seconds to play until halftime. Rush here to the left. And pushed out of bounds, so that'll stop the clock with... Three seconds to play. And that'll do it for the first half. Now the Tornadoes dominate that first half of football. A 28 to nothing advantage. Touchdowns by Zachary Orr. A reception from Miles Hayes. Miles Hayes then with a three-yard rushing touchdown to put the Tornadoes up 14-0 at the start of the second quarter. Hayes then found O'Leary from five yards out. Meanwhile, one more play, so reset of the clock. And that'll do it finally for the, for the first half. Meanwhile, Chancellor Lee Parker, a 15-yard run, made it 28-0. Tornadoes 15-0, or check that, 15-5 in the first down department. A 306-98 total yards. And the Tornadoes with a... Decisive lead, 28-0. Miles Hayes, the real story in this one, 13 of 16, 213 yards passing, two touchdowns. And Jaden O'Leary, five catches for 89 yards. Stick with us. We'll bring you half number two in about 20 minutes or so. And Tornadoes continue to roll 28 to 0. The lead here at Islamel Family Field. Thanks for joining us, Brevard College Football. The Brevard College Winners Leadership and Experiential Education Program is the most distinctive in the nation. I think one of the reasons why is because it is so focused on experiential education in addition to the outdoor education component. They are developing their leadership skills out on the field with each other. My internship was on Schooner Lynx. She's a 122 foot topsail schooner. Uh, she's a replica of an 1812 privateer. My job on Lynx this summer was a deckhand uh, and because of uh, the skills that I've learned at Brevard College such as uh, program planning and lesson planning and different techniques to teaching to different ages, and different types of people. Uh, I was promoted to the job of educator. This summer, my professor John Buford knew that I'd be at sea uh, quite a bit and he really worked with me. And when I would come into port, I would call him, he would always answer. He was really quick to respond with my emails and not just to say I got your email, but he would you know, 
talk about what was going on and ask me questions. And uh, it was really cool to have somebody like that uh, to support me for the summer and really help me succeed. You should come to Brevard College in the Wilderness Leadership and Experiential Education Program because you will become a leader, a strong, ethical leader. And that can be applied to any field, anywhere you go, whatever you do in your professional career. And it'll be a whole lot of fun as you learn those skills. Anybody who is interested in leadership skills and outdoor skills should definitely think about Brevard. It's an incredible place and a great place to be a part of. One of the hardest things that every college student experiences when they first come to college is what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to study? What am I going to be good at? And here at Brevard, you can take a music class, a wilderness education class, environmental science, English, anything. Unique experiential education. You meet with your professors, you meet with students that you actually see every day. You get to excel in the subject that you chose. Finding a way to mix my passion for mountain biking, art, and career together really happened during my internship. You should come to Brevard College because you will become a leader, a strong, ethical leader. And that can be applied to any field, anywhere you go, whatever you do in your professional career. Here's a recipe for success here. It's great. Before I got to Brevard College, I didn't know what experiential learning even was. We have all the rivers, Pisgah National Forest, DuPont State Forest, just all the resources are around us. So the location is why environmental studies is so great here. With experiential learning, it's not always field-based. We do quite a few things in the lab as well, so you get opportunities to do hands-on research in the lab. But whenever possible, when you can get outdoors and see 
what's actually happening. It's, it's different based on the conditions that are outdoors and you can never predict those. So a day that it's raining and cold, you're gonna see different activity levels among the animals and plants. And if it's a day that's sunny and warm, the courses that I teach are all based in the outdoors. My specialty is biodiversity. So I teach a course in biodiversity, but I also teach courses that are unique to the area. They're called Plants and Animals of the Southern Appalachians. Here at Brevard College, one of the things that we do really well is interact with these students who are undergraduates in a way that prepares them for graduate programs. That's what we can do at Brevard College. We can get these students who are interested in a particular area help them find a path that is tying together their interest with what our background, the backgrounds of the professors can do, and then position that student in a way that few undergraduates can be positioned to go on to a graduate program or to go directly into the field.
All right, back here at Islamel Family Field. Let's take a look at some of the first half numbers in the team category, all tornadoes. First downs, a 15 to five advantage. Total yards, 306 to 99. Net yards rushing, another jaw dropper, 93 to zero. So you calculate the sacks for Greensboro and zero yards rushing and 213.99 in pass yards. One turnover in this game, that was by Greensboro. As interception for the Nados. Time of possession in favor of the Nados as well. So back here at Islamel Family Field and gearing up for the second half and a couple of big individual stories in that first half. Miles Hayes, quarterback for the Tornadoes, he opened the game 10 for 10 and 13 of 16 for 213 yards, two touchdowns. A career day for Miles Hayes in a Tornado uniform and his number one target, Jaden O'Leary. Five catches for 89 yards and a touchdown. Hayes found Zachary Orr for 23 yards for the first touchdown of the game. Then he ran for a touchdown, a three-yard rush. And then O'Leary with a five-yard catch put the Tornadoes up 21-0. And then Chancellor Lee Parker with his first career touchdown, a 15-yard rush, 28-0 Tornadoes, what it all adds up to. Greensboro will start with the ball to start the second half. So... Back underway here, and the Tornado's ready to get things started. We talked about the natural, intrinsic electricity of the Tornadoes when the lights are on here at Islamel Family Field. It almost comes automatically every time they practice under these lights. And tonight, so far, so good from the Tornado's perspective. 28-0, the lead at halftime, but... Crazier things have happened. We still got to play too much, two more quarters here at Islamel Family Field. And the Tornadoes will kick off. To the Pride to start this second half. Hawkins deep for the Pride. And Hawkins. Able to split some Tornado defenders in a considerable kickoff return for Hawkins all the way to the 45-yard line. So big start there for Greensboro and some of their more robust starting field position in this one. So getting ready to get started here. What has turned into a rainy evening, no surprise, with the remnants of Hurricane Ian. First and 10 from the 45. And a pass there, caught, and a first down. So quick hitter there from Greensboro, Ryan Buchanan, the tight end for the Pride. And Greensboro suddenly playing with a bit of tempo. So... First time we've really seen the hurry up from Greensboro after the quick first down to come out of the halftime locker room. You do not want to become complacent despite leading 28-0. And Greensboro certainly with a bit of fire in their belly coming out of the halftime. 
gang tackle there as Rodney Scott had the carry. Toby Naylor leading the way for the Tornadoes. So second and seven from the 33. Pride have been shut out thus far. Shotgun snap to Lowry. And some serious pressure making things difficult on Lowry. R.J. Everett getting deep in that backfield. And just like that, another third down situation. Prider three of eight on third down thus far. Third and seven. Lowry, back to pass. And great job defensively by the Tornadoes to break that up. Montrell Stinson. Along with Pledger. Stinson and Pledger with the pass breakup. So that'll bring up fourth down, and the Pride are going to go for it here on fourth down. So fourth and seven. Lowry back to pass, able to find a receiver in the flat and a great open field tackle there. Ball comes loose. Big time stop there. James Woods with a big time stop there. And Tornadoes take over on downs. Hayes with a keeper. So James Woods, what an open field tackle by Woods. To stop the pride. Woods, sophomore from Lincolnton, North Carolina. After the two yard keeper by Hayes, second and eight from the 37. And the pass, in and out of the hands of the Tornado receiver. And that'll bring up a third down situation for the Tornadoes. Grafton Petrie, the intended receiver. So third down for the Nados. Three of six in that department. Pass there, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Dustin Stevens was the intended target. So fourth and eight, and the punting unit comes on. Student section getting wild here at Isla Mel Family Field. Meanwhile, punt is going to land out of bounds, no return. So decent field position for the Pride coming back. Your score, 12.38 to play, third quarter. Brevard 28, Greensboro 0.
Back to action here at Eyes Lamel Family Field. Greensboro takes over possession. Whistles. So clock is stopped. Play is ruled dead. And we'll see what the flag's all about. And actually a timeout. So ball was snapped. Players were in motion, but timeout was called. So we'll take it with them. Your score, 12.36 to play, quarter number three. Tornadoes 28, Pride 0. I've taken jumps in my academic career, and I've taken jumps in uh, just socializing and getting out and getting to do things I've never done before. The thing that brought me to Brevard is the experiential learning. I've always been a hands-on guy. I love it here at Brevard. Over Christmas break, I was itching to come back because I love the area so much. Experiential learning here is beyond all of my expectations. Brevard College, a top choice for students around the world. Back here at Eyes Lamel Family Field and Greensboro. After the timeout there, first and 10, deep shot. We were expecting to see plenty of those. They've converted one of those deep shots, that one incomplete. So now second and 10 as the rain continues here. Temperature dropping. We'll see if we can get you an update on the weather as temperatures dropped considerably since game time. Deep shot there, and that'll bring up a second and ten opportunity. Jock Pledger, great job. Man-to-man -man defense there from that cornerback position. No surprise. Outstanding dual sport athlete here at the Tornadoes. Great open field tackle there. James Woods once again. He's made two of those here in this quarter, temperatures drop down to 53 degrees. It feels a lot colder than that as it's a very moist, wet evening here at Eyes Lamel Family Field as remnants of Hurricane Ian continue to find their way here to the mountains of western North Carolina. Under 12 minutes to play here, a third down situation for Lowry. And the Pride and another timeout. So that's already their second of the second half. The second of this possession by the Pride. And they'll be left with one timeout the rest of the way. Well, folks, want to recognize Party Sports Medicine, Southeastern Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, the official health care provider of Brevard College Tornado Athletics. In addition to the quality of care provided by the orthopedic doctors, Pardee also offers care in the area of oncology, cardiovascular, primary care, and several subspecialties. Pardee Sports Medicine, proud partners with Brevard College Athletics. Also, special thanks to Hampton Inn Brevard, the official hotel of the Brevard College Tornadoes, located just minutes from the campus, as well as the entrance to Pisgah National Forest. On the edge of the National Forest, free hot breakfast. That'll be your fuel for the day, whether you're coming to cheer on the tornadoes or exploring the National Forest. Check us out, Hampton and Brevard. And able to find an open receiver there is Lowry, and then breaking several tackles. Kale Matthews, some serious yak there, yards after catch. One-man wrecking crew. Well, the concession items are flying off the shelf here at Eyes Lamel Family Field, especially the Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Tonight at Eyes Lamel Family Field, a little fun fact, the only place you can find Chick-fil-A in Transylvania County, right here, right now. Meanwhile, Incomplete pass there, second and 10 from the 39. Chick-fil-A, Jets pizza, snacks, candy, popcorn, peanuts, soda. Ooh, it's so good.
Play clock running down now at four. And just before the play clock expires, Lowry able to get the snap. And then heavy pressure there from Toby Naylor, incomplete, third and ten. Well, big shout-out, too, to the drum line under the direction of Nathan Tingler. Such a great addition to the atmosphere here. Drum captain Mackenzie Douglas. And they've got that student section rocking. You wouldn't know it's 50 degrees by the looks of some of those NATOs. Receiver in motion here, rolling out to the right's Lowry. Lowry able to thread the needle, find an open receiver through several Tornado defenders. And that's going to be a first down catch for the Pride. Cale Matthews yet again. So Lowry able to find Matthews. K.J. Dagout on the coverage for the Nados. 10.48 to play here. Quarter number three. And this is the deepest penetration by the Pride thus far. And it looks like a sack. So Toby Naylor with the sack. And second and long now after the sack by Naylor. Nine fifty-five to play, quarter number three. Running play up the middle. There is Burgess. Reese Rubio with the tackle. Reese Rubio, the senior from Beaumont, Texas, had a great conversation with Reese on a recent edition of Tornado Talk about. High school football in Texas. Running debate around the Brevard College football program. Who has the best high school football in the country? Pass there. And... Huge mob of... Both Pride and Tornado players there. We'll see where the ball spotted here after all that. A lively debate the other day over what state has the best high school football? Texas, Florida, California. There was even some people chiming in defending Georgia. But Reese Rubio could tell you about the high school football in the state of Texas, that's for sure. 8.28 to play here, quarter number three. Pass there, and that'll be another first down. By far the best drive of the evening for the Pride, who have continued to march their way down the field. That time, Lowry finding Coy Davis. This play coming up will be the 10th play of the drive. And another first down for the Pride. So the Pride really moving the ball here. Tornadoes in danger of giving up their first points to the Pride. Potentially a flag there. This might be a pass interference type of situation. Woods was there defensively for the Nados. See what the officials have to say. And it's going to be a pass interference on the Tornado. So that'll be half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. And the assignment has become that much tougher for the Tornado defense. As the drive continues for the Pride. Rush here. And 
And there's the signal. So the Pride able to get the touchdown. Burgess with the carry. That was an impressive scoring drive by the Pride. By far their best of the evening. And able to get on the board for the first time. And elude the shutout. Now extra point. Collins kick is up. And good. So 28 to 7. Now your score. 749 to play here. Quarter number three. Islamel Family Field. Impressive scoring drive for the Pride. 11 plays, 65 yards, chewed up 449 on the clock. And Tornadoes will receive here. Temperature continuing to drop, rain continuing to fall. Friday Night Lights, campus of Brevard College. And Cole's taken down there, so kickoff return for Dalton Cole. Talking about a versatile player out of Hendersonville. Can do a little of everything. Well, this game you're watching right now, one of just nine games across all of NCAA taking place this evening. There are several reschedule situations due to Hurricane Ian. And where we landed this evening... Brevard and Greensboro, one of just nine games across the country. Pass there. Good on Cole once again. Cole after the catch, taking it across midfield. So Cole, a kickoff return and now a reception in back-to-back -back plays. A few games going on in Division I. Tulane, Houston, UTSA, Middle Tennessee, San Diego State, Boise State. If you're up late, Washington and UCLA and New Mexico UNLV for those night owls or insomniacs on the East Coast. Meanwhile, 7-18 to play here, quarter number three after that gainer by Cole. First and ten for the Tornadoes from the 50. Rush here to the right side. That's Chancellor Lee Parker. Lee Parker. Kind of a bust-out performance for Chancellor Lee Parker wearing number 44 this evening. And Chancellor Lee Parker scoring his first career touchdown in a tornado uniform. Ben Manguju with the tackle. And another first down for the Tornadoes. Chancellor Lee Parker getting it done. 6.42 to play here. Quarter number three. Shuffle pass there. Nicely done. Jaden O'Leary, who else? A career evening for him as well. Taken down ultimately once again by Mangugu. Six twelve to play here. Quarter number three, Tornadoes moving the ball. Rush there, Hayes on the keeper. He's done a great job with his legs, also with his arm. Simon Marsh Sheridan with the tackle. Tornadoes. Now with an 18-11 advantage in first downs, 354 total yards on the evening. 
They led 28-0 at halftime, looking to add to what's now a 28-7 lead. 5.30 to play here, quarter number three. Yoder in the backfield with Hayes alongside him. Shotgun formation. Hayes drops back, looks to his right, and was looking for Cedric, check that, Grafton Petrie. So that'll bring up a third down for the Nados. Hayes, 15 of 20 for 245, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Jaden O'Leary has been his primary target. Six catches for 106 yards and a touchdown. 518 to play here, quarter number three. Hayes. Broken up there. Hayes was trying to make the connection to O'Leary once again. Robinson on the pass breakup. And I'll bring up a fourth down situation. And a field goal attempt for Stamati Damalos. And this will be from 35 yards. From 35 yards out with 5.13 on the clock. Kick is up. And it's good. So from 35 yards out, Stamati hammers that one home. He's got four made extra points and now the made field goal. And Tornadoes extend their lead a bit further. 31-7. to here in the third quarter, under the lights at Islamel Family Field. Back to action here at the home of the Bernard College Tornadoes, Eyes Lamel Family Field. The first ever home football game on campus played under the lights. Healthy return there by Devin Hawkins. So Hawkins... giving the Pride some good field position after the Pride put together their best drive of the evening. Lowry now 13 of 25 for 178 yards, no touchdowns and an interception. Kind of a pistol formation here for the Pride and handoff and Tornado's there defensively. That's going to be no gain. So that'll bring up a second and ten. Just a wall of defenders. Yancey with the tackle there. Also Luke Dodson, another recent guest of Tornado Talk. Brevard High School product. Lowry back to pass and heavy pressure by the Nados. Looked like RJ Everett deep in that backfield. Luke Dodson once again. Tornadoes getting it done on the defensive end. And now we'll see what they dial up. Defensive coordinator Shane Nelson.
Third and 10 from their own 43, the Pride. Lowry drops back. He throws up a ball that very easily could have been picked off. Jerome Bass with some heavy pressure, making things tough on Lowry. Pass is incomplete, and the Pride will have no choice but to bring on the punt unit. 4.07 to play here, quarter number three. Pledger back deep, ready to return this punt. Collins, once again, he's had a workout with that right leg of his. Punt is up. Fair catch from Pledger. And Tornadoes will start at their own 26. So your score with four minutes to play here, quarter number three, Nato's 31, Pride 7. Thirty-one seven to play. Hayes going back to work for the Nados. Rush here up the middle. Yoder able to find an opening there. Big time run for Mitchell Yoder. Big time rush there, Mitchell Yoder, senior from Columbus, North Carolina, Polk County High School. And another first down for the Nados. 31-7, Tornadoes on top, late here in the third quarter. Rush here, Yoder once again. And Yoder across the first down line. And another first down for the Naders. So rush of 12, then a, another rush of 12. Back-to-back -back first downs, all on the legs of Mitchell Yoder. Yoder. Now six carries, 45 yards. And the Tornadoes now with 21 first downs. That's going to be a substantial... Loss there. Actually, it, we'll call it a loss of one with the forward progress as Chancellor Lee Parker did not fool anyone that time. But Lee Parker's had a nice game. Four carries, 43 yards, and a touchdown. 2.22 to play here. Clock the ally of the Tornadoes. Not the friend of the pride as it continues to tick away. Another tackle for loss there. So the pride starting to up things on the defensive end. Tackle there by Emerson Manogot, freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina, Mallard Creek High School. 148 to play. Ninety seconds left to play here in the third quarter, and Hayes was able to find an open receiver, and then at the very last moment, it was broken broken up there. Intended once again for O'Leary. We have gotten a heavy dose of O'Leary. And that'll bring out the punt unit for the Nados. From their own 43, Akis with the punt. And no fair catch there in heavy traffic, a dangerous play there. 
quite the decision by the punt returner of the Pride, Wallace. And Pride will take back over there, first and 10 from the 37. So Tornado Faithful getting the NATO Nation chant going with the 31-7 lead. USA South Conference opener for the Tornadoes. Rush here right up the middle and gain of two. So down to a minute to play here. Stafford with the rush. Now 45 seconds to play here. Quarter number three. Tornadoes under the direction of head coach Bill Kyatt. Broken up there. Greensboro's head coach is Tyler Card. He also is the offensive coordinator. Tornadoes defensively getting it done. Andrew Bishop getting his big paw up there on the defensive line. General manager for the Tornadoes and special assistant defense and special teams. Coordinator, that's Martin Bayless. He's in his third year. All sorts of NFL experience for Coach Bayless. Also coached in the USFL, as did Coach Kyatt this past spring. Rest of the coaching staff for the Tornadoes, Everett Lindsay, assistant head coach, run game coordinator, offensive line coach, defensive coordinator Shane Nelson, Garrett Kruzix, the quarterback's coach, outside linebacker's coach Josh Romero, Jack Wellenhofer, special teams coordinator Nick Eubanks, defensive line coach, Rashad Nelson, wide receivers coach, Ladarius Wiley, DB's coach, Garrett Groshek, running backs coach, Brandon Crawford, assistant D-line coach, Grant Holmstrom, assistant QB coach, Dalen Curtis, assistant O-line coach, and special assistant to the head coach and defensive analyst, John Burton III. So clock ticking away here and able to... Break up that pass. Pass was broken up. Buchanan was the intended receiver. Looked like Dylan James laying the wood there from that safety position. 31 seconds to play. Quarter number three, Tornadoes will hit the road in two weeks at Huntington. Before that, the big homecoming game versus Methodist right here. And a late flag comes in. That's probably going to be roughing the passer. And that's one of those mistakes Coach Kyatt spoke about pregame that he was really hoping to avoid and it's going to be a roughing the passer call Wyatt Langford 15 yards automatic first down so self inflicted wound by the tornadoes certainly a teaching moment that I'm sure will be dissected in the film room. 27 seconds left to play here. Quarter number three, 31-7, Nados. First and 10 from the 35. Pass here, able to find an open receiver somehow in just a Mass of tornado defenders, but somehow, some way, Cale Matthews came up with that, scored the touchdown, and just like that, the the Greensboro Pride, as Cale Matthews came down with the catch, thirty-five yards out, 
injured player on the field in the meantime. So we'll take a quick break. 31-13, tornadoes on top. Probably one of the prettiest places on the earth. And to come to somewhere where it's such a tight-knit community, where everybody has your back, I mean, you're not going to find that anywhere else at bigger schools. I like to go hang out at the coffee shop, sit outside at the picnic tables, maybe do a little bit of homework there, and just socialize because there's always somebody that I know there. Brevard does make it easy to come here. The admission process is... Montreal Stinson... Nice round of applause for him. Player shaken up on that play. Stinson, the junior, converted wide receiver and really has done a great job in this new role at defensive back. Extra point is up. And no good. So that... Could come into play if this game gets close down the stretch. 31-13, your score, 17.6 to play, quarter number three. Thirty-one, thirteen. Nato's on top. After that touchdown by Greensboro. Thirty-five yard catch by Matthews from Lowry. So tornadoes were reset. Tornadoes certainly could use a substantial drive here, maybe some more points on the board. 18 point game at the moment. So you don't wanna take your foot off the pedal. First and 10 from the 35. Hayes. Handoff there. Mitchell Yoder. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter as the time ticks away here at Isla Mel Family Field. Your score at the end of three. Tornadoes 31, Pride 13. I've taken jumps in my academic career, and I've taken jumps in uh, just socializing and getting out and getting to do things I've never done before. The thing that brought me to Brevard is the experiential learning. I've always been a hands-on guy. I love it here at Brevard. Over Christmas break, I was itching to come back because I love the area so much. Experiential learning here is beyond all of my expectations. Brevard College, a top choice for students around the world. Back underway here, 31-13. Yeah, 
And deep shot there, and there's the flag as one of the results that can happen every time you throw the ball vertically down the field there is the pass interference, and that is exactly what Tornadoes were able to get there. So one of the few deep shots we've seen from the Tornadoes, they've been getting it done all sorts of ways on the offensive end. But that time, a pass interference call, 15-yarder. First and 10 for Brevard. Rush here to the left. Very short gain, maybe no gain. And the rush by Murray will call it no gain. So second and 10 from the 45. Miles Hayes, 15 of 23, 245, two touchdowns and an interception, or no interceptions, rather. He was 10 for 10 to start this game. Drops back, passes, finds Jaden O'Leary, the leading receiver in this contest. That was O'Leary's seventh catch on the night. Perhaps the most impressive number of all for the Tornadoes offensively. Hayes has utilized 10 different receivers. Targeted 10 different receivers. He's connected with seven of them. Curtis into the contest, Deshaun Curtis, and that was the intended receiver there. Big jump on the ball there by the defensive back by the Pride. Looked like Kendrick Baines getting a good read on that one. That'll bring up another fourth down in the punting unit for the Tornadoes. We talked about the idea of the Greensboro maybe getting – A bolt of energy themselves coming out of that halftime. Well, Greensboro's outscored Brevard 13-3 to here in the second half. Punt there. And down at the 11. So, Tornadoes pinning Greensboro back deep. So first and 10, pinned all the way back at the 11-yard line. Rush there. Negligible gain. Clock will tick in the meantime. Greensboro doesn't look like they're in quite of enough of a hurry down 31 to 13. Now 12:45 to play here fourth quarter. Play action pass and then a little dump off there. Defended well by the Tornadoes, keeping the pride short of that first down marker. Pass there by Buchanan. Dylan James, we've called his name a few times here in the second half, able to lay down the hit. Third down for the pride. They're 5 of 13, that's 38%. 
here in this contest. We'll call this one third and two. And timeout, meanwhile. And timeout Greensboro. Their last timeout. So they've extinguished all their timeouts. Well, I do want to tell you what's going on around the world of Brevard College Tornado Athletics. Exciting time of year with the fall sports in full swing. Check us out, by the way, on Monday nights for Tornado Talk. That's at 7 p.m. Tornadoes will be in action tomorrow in the sports of volleyball. They're at a quad match in Buena Vista, Virginia. They'll be taking on the host of that event, Southern Virginia, at 10 a.m., and then Mary Baldwin at 2 p.m. The men's soccer team is also in Buena Vista, Virginia, they take on Southern Virginia at 3 p.m. tomorrow. JV football here at Islamel Family Field at 2 p.m. on Sunday. If you want to come on out, check out the JV team. Meanwhile, third and two here, and the Pride are going to be able to move the sticks. Completion there to Greer. And first down for the Pride. Women's soccer will be in action on Tuesday against this very Greensboro Pride program. That's Tuesday, 6 p.m. here at Islamel Family Field. Lowry, back to pass on first down and big time stop there. And might be a targeting call there. Koger may have come in either late or perhaps a targeting call. We'll see what the ruling is. Big time conference here by the officials. Well, we mentioned women's soccer Tuesday at 6 p.m. Women's volleyball also 6 p.m. on Tuesday at the Bosch. So, you can kind of get two for the price of one. Check out the women's soccer team. And also the volleyball team will be playing at the Bosch. If you want to check out a little of both on the same evening. And, in fact, a personal foul call. Personal foul, the call. I'm not sure about the targeting portion of it. Did not see the motion from the, the referee on the targeting side. But that's going to be a costly penalty that will move the sticks. And another first down for the Pride. So with 11-10 to play, Pride will reset here at the 46-yard line. Backup quarterback Alec Williams Carr into the game for the Pride. So our first look at Williams Carr. Alec Williams Carr, redshirt sophomore from Miami, Florida, Norland High School. That's a very good high school program down there in Miami-Dade County. Norland High School has produced a lot of players over the years. And Greensboro, backup quarterback Alex Williams Carr into the contest. He sends a receiver in motion. Now hands off to his running back up the middle. That's Burgess. Stopped a couple yards short of the first down marker. Toby Naylor getting in on the tackle. Well, we mentioned women's soccer and volleyball on Tuesday. Wednesday, October 5th, right here at Eisenhower Family Field, men's soccer hosting Johnson and Wales, who makes the trip from Charlotte. 9.48 to play and counting. Another third down situation. For the Pride, last time the Tornadoes with the personal foul gave up a big one on third. This time the Tornadoes defense looks like they've gotten the stop. That's going to set up a fourth and one. You would imagine the Pride would go for it in this situation. Clock continues to tick. 
So fourth and one from the 45. No surprise, the Pride offense stays out there on the field. Clock continuing to tick here. Nine minutes to play in regulation. Four on the game clock. Now one on the game clock, and that should be a delay a game penalty. Yes, the flag flies, and that's going to push the pride back, and now more of a decision because it's going to be fourth and six. And the pride are going to have to decide whether they want to go for it once again on fourth down. I guess you might as well, down 18 with 849 to play. Some shifts in personnel for the Pride because certainly the play call might be a little different here. Fourth and six versus fourth and one. Pistol formation for the Pride. Fourth down. Play action pass, and it's picked off. Toby Naylor, he's on the run. Toby Naylor with the pickoff and a substantial interception. Alec Williams' car was trying to get that ball between a rock and a hard place, and Toby Naylor, the senior linebacker from Southampton, England, with the interception, eventually brought down by the quarterback, Williams' car, taking out some frustration on Naylor after the interception. So the linebacker from England intercepts the quarterback from Miami, Florida. So tornadoes take over. It was fourth down, and so they were going to take over on downs anyway, but the interception return creates better field position. Meanwhile, rush here to the left side. Bodies flying all over on the near sideline here. Dawn Cole with a run that time. Well, women's soccer, we mentioned them in action this Tuesday. They'll also be in action one week from tonight, the homecoming women's soccer game versus Southern Virginia. Hope to see you there. Eyes Lamel Family Field under the lights, 7 p.m. start, Friday, October the 7th, and then Saturday, October 8th, the homecoming football game for the Tornadoes right here at Eyes Lamel Family Field. Rush here, keeper for Hayes brought down. So the homecoming football game, 2 p.m. versus Methodist on Saturday, October the 8th. There's a country music concert that morning, late morning, early afternoon. Cody Siniard, Brevard College alum, and he's going to be rocking and rolling out there at that tailgate lot. You want to get there early, check out some tunes from the singer-songwriter and celebrate homecoming. We'll also have a special national anthem singer, also a Brevard College alum, Lily Bartlison. Brevard College Alumni Baseball Golf Tournament will be happening that day. There's alumni games of all sorts of sports, including men's lacrosse, basketball, Hall of Fame inductions, the 1982 cross-country team being honored. You name it, it's happening during homecoming weekend. And a 44-yard attempt here for Stamati Damalos. And he nailed it. One of the top. Or check that. No good. So our, our, our fault there. Kind of a tough vantage here with all the rain and fog in the air. So our apologies. Miss calling that Damalos attempt, but... Missed field goal there, so Tornado's unable to 
put additional points on the board. So hope you can join us for homecoming. Saturday, October the 8th. Basketball season right around the corner as well. Folks gearing up for that. Head women's basketball coach Donald Hudson. Head men's basketball coach Lee Burgess. Getting their teams prepared for what's going to be another great season at the Boshmore Gymnasium. 6.31 to play here. Quarter number four. Rush here. And you got to kind of scratch your head a little bit here. Greensboro's approach after the missed field goal. Down by 18. 6-10 to play, but are they starting to wave the white flag when you're running the ball right up the middle and you don't seem to be in any sort of rush whatsoever? Under six minutes to play here. Williams Carr, quarterback for the Pride. Pass there, caught by Matthews. Matthews has had a nice evening. Matthews over 100 yards receiving to lead the pride. 5.19 to play here, quarter number four. Third and seven from the 30. Pass here, check that. Another catch for Matthews. That's his seventh reception. Yancey and Rubio were there defensively. Yeah, Matthews, seven catches, 110 yards. By far the most productive weapon of the pride this evening. And Jerome Bass there on the tackle. One of those tornado captains. Senior out of Red Springs, North Carolina, Red Springs High School. Tornadoes had a 28-0 lead at halftime. Meanwhile, Greensboro's outscored the Natos 13 to three here in the second half. But it seems like that big cushion will be the difference in this one. Rush here, Williams Carr with a keeper. And then a flag comes in late. See what the call is here. In the vicinity of holding. And indeed, that is the call. So this will be a situation where the pride are pushed back. That was the sixth penalty of the evening for the Pride. Tornadoes, five penalties, 63 yards. 3.33 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Pass there. Completed. To Wallace, Deshaun Wallace, senior from Rockingham, North Carolina. Tackle there by Bishop. Bishop has had an active evening. Andrew Bishop, sophomore from 
Hickory, North Carolina. Not all that far from us here in the mountains. Second and long. And just about back to the original line of scrimmage, that's going to bring up a third and ten. Well, I want to thank everybody who made this game possible. Things did not look good early in the week when everyone was considering their plans with Hurricane Ian on its way. Once again, our... Thoughts and prayers are with those down in southwest Florida in particular, but anybody who is affected by this storm. And a lot of things operationally had to happen for this game to be moved from Saturday to Friday night and has gone off without a hitch. Meanwhile, pass there to Greer. So that'll move the chains and suddenly... Little pep in Greensboro step, but too little too late for the pride. 144 and counting. Wallace with another catch there. Meanwhile, Williams Carr continues his work from the quarterback position, rolls out to the left, and nearly picked off. Look like Kentrell Holloway had a great jump on that one. Holloway, haven't mentioned him this evening yet. Sophomore from Roxboro, North Carolina, Person High School. Well, big thanks to the drumline, the cheerleaders, the student section for showing up. Creating this atmosphere under the lights. Pass there. Caught. And then out of bounds. Taylor Willis was there defensively. Catch there was by Privet. Freshman number 83. 76 seconds to play here. Quarter number four. It's all academic at this point. And that'll be a sack for the Tornadoes. As Tornadoes, Ernest Smith leading the charge. That's the fourth sack by the Tornado defense this evening. A well, job well done there. 45 seconds left to play here. Quarter number four. Tornadoes on the verge of going 1-0 in conference play. Then another quarterback sack. And also, ball may have come loose there for a moment. Ernest Smith, the second. Back-to-back -back plays. Have yourself a night, Ernest Smith. Junior from Barnwell, South Carolina, Barnwell High School. As time ticking away now, 15 seconds left to play. And it's going to be a festive evening here in Brevard, North Carolina to celebrate this one, USA South Conference opener. And time will tick away there, and that'll do it. Your final score from Islamel Family Field, Brevard 31, Greensboro 13. The Tornado is able to improve to 1-0 in USA South Conference play. And the start to the conference portion of the season has been a successful one as the Tornadoes take a 31 to 13 win. Hang with us, we're gonna tell you all about it, how it all went down here under the lights at Brevard College. 
Tornadoes 31, Pride 13. Back here at Islamel Family Field as the celebration continues. So Tornadoes with the 31-13 to 13 win. Let's tell you how it went down. Tornadoes took a 7-0 lead with six minutes to play back in the first quarter on a 23-yard pass from Miles Hayes to Zachary Orr. Hayes then made the score 14-0 with a three-yard rushing touchdown. 21-0, Brevard went up top of the Pride on a pass from Hayes to O'Leary. O'Leary had a huge night. We'll tell you about that as well. Chancellor Lee Parker with a 15-yard run. At the very end of that second quarter, just before halftime, that capped off a 77-yard play, yard drive, seven-play drive for the Tornadoes, 28-0. The Pride came out of halftime with a bit of a statement, you know, they were able to score on a touchdown drive to make it 28-7 to in the third quarter. Damalos hit a 35-yard field goal for the Tornadoes, 5.07 to play in the third. That made it 31-7. And then Greensboro scored again in the third quarter on a 35-yard pass. Lowry found Matthews to make it 31-13. to Neither team scored in the fourth quarter. Zeros across the board there. Meanwhile, some team statistics. Tornadoes with a 21 to 19 advantage in first downs. Greensboro actually was more efficient on third down, 7 of 18, while the Tornadoes were just 3 of 11. Total yards, all Tornadoes, 387 to 289. And Tornadoes. With a big day offensively, getting it done defensively as well. They had five sacks, two interceptions on the defensive end. And the Tornadoes able to take the 31-13 win. Individually, Tornadoes were led by their quarterback, Miles Hayes. 17 of 26 for 250 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Hayes started this game red hot, 10 for 10. He could not miss to start this game, and outstanding work from Miles Hayes, the graduate student. Hayes also got it done with his legs. Touchdown, rushing as well to go along with those two passing touchdowns. Mitchell Yoder was the leading rusher for the Tornadoes, eight carries, 46 yards. Chancellor Lee Parker had five carries, 42 yards, his first career touchdown as a Tornado. Receiving Jaden O'Leary with a career day. Seven catches, 111 yards, including a long of 32 and a touchdown. Dalton Cole had three catches for 43 yards. Marcus Lane, two catches for 24. Other receivers who had catches included Zachary Orr, Jonathan Woods, Mitchell Yoder, and Cooper Hogan. 
uh, tornadoes getting it done. All sorts of ways offensively. Meanwhile, Greensboro, their starting quarterback, David Lowry, 16 of 32, 231 touchdown in an interception. Alec Williams' car came in. He was 7 of 9 for 50, efficient, the quarterback from Miami. Torn- uh, Pride, rather, were unable to get much going on the ground. Averaging well under a yard per rush. And Burgess was the leading rusher, eight carries, 22 yards. Cale Matthews had a good day. The wide receiver for the Pride, seven for 110. Well, the Tornadoes will get back to work this week and prepare for their big homecoming matchup on Saturday. As the Tornadoes will host Methodist, two o'clock. Country music concert with Cody Sinyard, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at Ives Lamel Family Field. That will happen in the tailgate lot. Hall of Fame induction that morning. Women's soccer game that night on Friday night to get you, get you going. I mean, there's so much going on during homecoming, I don't even know where to begin. But just be here at Brevard College and soak it all in. And... Keep the winning ways going for the Tornadoes who start off this USA South Conference season with a 1-0 record. Tornadoes now 1-3 on the season. Greensboro now 0-5. Well, I want to thank everyone who made tonight's broadcast possible. Special thanks to members of the women's lacrosse program, the men's lacrosse program, Joseph Marvin pushing the buttons behind the scenes. Public address announcer Ray Gill. And a cast of thousands here at Brevard College making the overall production happen and the operations happen behind the scenes. Great work at those concession stands and down there at Souvenir Shop. By the way, Saturday of next week, there's only one place in all of Transylvania County where you'll be able to get a Chick-fil-A sandwich. And it's right here at Islamel Family Field. So if you haven't made your plans already, country music concert, homecoming, tornadoes off to a unbeaten start in conference play, all sorts of festivities. Be here next Saturday, October the 8th. So for all of us at Brevard College, your final score for the final time, Brevard 31, Greensboro 13, go Tornadoes.